this river goes beyond humans. It goes much, much deeper into your spirit. I feel it here. My soul is here. When I'm here, it feels like this is where I belong. That's the best of everything there is, is out here on the water. This is what we want to do. We want to live and die right here, you know, doing what we love. The river is a, a place of peace for me. I liken it to visiting an old friend. I physically walked virtually every mile in the basin. I've had a chance to see what the Still Guamish Basin really is. And what it really is, is the sum of all its parts. I spent 25 years working within the Still Guamish Basin. I remember how the river was. And right now, it's a dying river. It's almost dead. People sometimes forget some basic truisms about water. One is it always flows downhill. And two, the health of the river is the result of all that's been done in the landscape around it. We converted much of the estuaries to farmland. We've moved timber from the, the hillsides. We build on the, in, within the basin. We have our cities in the basin that constrains the, the ability of the river to, to function like it normally would. All those collectively have an impact. I am Katie B. Saiva. I'm a member of the Still Guamish Tribe of Indians, and the Still Guamish River is named after us. We grew up on the river, we taught each other on the river, hunting, fishing, gathering, all of it was in close proximity to the river. It's hard to articulate, honestly. The significance of salmon to our culture goes beyond just, you know, traditional food. It goes deeper into a sense of spiritual understanding. I'm 30 years old and I've never been able to go out with my grandparents or my parents and learn what it's like to harvest Chinook. Being one of the first generations that hasn't been able to harvest Chinook has been damaging to me and my sense of self. You know, not being able to feel like I'm indigenous enough or I'm tribal enough because I can't access those fish. A lot of members in my tribal community struggle with an identity crisis. I've learned to connect myself to the river just in different ways. Being able to go down, touch the water, pray, it's definitely something that I have to work on every day. Whenever I hear someone say, if your stock is so dwindled, let's just let it go or just have it go extinct. My response is always, once ours is gone, it's only a matter of time until you're struggling with the same issue, just on a different system. As soon as the still Guamish is extinct, it's only a matter of time until we see the same thing everywhere else. Our salmon are an indicator to a much bigger issue. The more apathetic we are to the issue, the greater the issue becomes. This is the perfect place for me. When I'm here, it feels like this is where I belong. Does it flood here? That one needs a sip. 
When we bought the place, I had no idea what was in store for me with flooding. In that first year, we had our first 100 year flood. Sheep are small animals. They can't withstand floodwaters. They're, they're short, they don't float. You know, I'm asking myself, is this a, a one-time deal? Is this, a, is this a, a freak of nature that we got this big flood? But then it happened again. And in that 20 years, we've had multiple 100-year floods. So everything that you see here, this entire valley, in a big flood, absolutely everything goes underwater. You don't see any land. Over the years, with development, with climate change, it started flooding more and more and more. Farming is so important in this area. We need our food security, and our food security is right here. Sure, we would all like to live and farm in a place where we didn't have to worry about flooding, but upland agriculture really doesn't exist much anymore because anything upland has houses on it. This is my son, John. This was his first. They're not as big as they used to be, but they still come through. So I've been fishing the Puget Sound for 36 years. If I really like something, I, I go in with both feet. Uh, the excitement of hooking into a fish, not knowing how big it's going to be or what exactly it's going to be. Now, taking kids and grandkids and friends, there's nothing I enjoy more. The Stillaguamish Chinook is impacting the entire state of Washington saltwater fishery. And anybody that fishes saltwater is really paying the price for that. If the fish don't come back in decent numbers, then we don't fish. Not being able to have seasons beyond just a few days, the Stillaguamish is causing that. You can see all these boats around you, fishing boats, and they're all sitting here. They're not loading boats because there's, there's no fishing. The local fishing economy has already tanked so many times, but I think this is gonna be the end of what's left. It's just not penciling out. But we do have to figure out a way to keep it going and keep us going. This is why we live here is because of the salt water and why we're fighting so hard. It's sad, it's really sad because people don't know what they've got until it's gonna be gone. This river is special to people like myself, but at the same time, it's, it's not unique. It's an example of what's happened to almost all of our rivers. The question has become for society, how far are we collectively willing to go to help restore those systems of some semblance of health? We need more people to learn how they can help. We have to ensure proper stewardship that means restoring the estuary, planting trees along the river to develop shade, giving the river room to move in a way that doesn't put people in harm's way, and then doing it all in a way that can meet the scale of the issue quickly enough. We're working on that with everyone. Without a doubt, we can come together to improve the future of the Stillaguamish. We have the talents. We have the skill, we have the knowledge to do that. Can we do that? Yeah, we can. Will we do that? That's the bigger question. It comes back to working together at all levels. At times it just seems like a really daunting task, but there's a lot that we can do. I have to have hope that we're all in it together. Humans rely on all the things that salmon rely on. So protecting salmon protects everybody else as well.